You're listening to the Inside Scoop, a podcast about self-improvement and knowledge seeking. Our aim is to explore a diverse range of topics and perform self-checks on whether we're being the best versions of ourselves every week. I'm your host, Marius Abelis. This is Oscar. Let's get started. Hello, Marius. <laughs> so, yeah, so this time, uh, it's it's a bit of a, again, you know, we're, we're kind of like duality of, of our podcast existence. We have different... Uh, well, let, let's cut the chase, right? I am going to go back to uni. Well, go back, right? In the quote, air quotes. Uh, because, you know, uh, lockdowns and all the teaching is virtual and remote, you know? So that's going to happen uh, on Monday, which is, you know, today's uh, January 15th. Uh, that's happening in like two to three days right and it's like how do you feel about it yeah that's the thing right it's mentally it's weird right it's like the holidays have been everything right so to be honest everything is a huge mush now right everything that's Mm -hmm. the semester starts it's like even the first semester it starts you know all the nonsense happens and then boom now you know the holidays and the kind of transition into the the holidays isn't all that noticeable it's just that well mm. there's not mental deadlines that you need to do you know it's like you still wake up you still sit at your desk or whatever you know because like everything's locked locked up pretty much so you you know it's not that noticeable because we don't go to lectures physically so it's the same it's just that you know now all of a sudden there's no one kind of asking you to do things i guess yeah there's no cues for you to tell you that yeah yeah it's like it's like there's no and that's a big problem yeah it's a real problem yeah do you think so any thoughts yeah i think it's real i think everybody's experiencing it Mm. and i think like i mean for you in the beginning you really liked working from home and i don't know if you still feel the same way about that i'm fine but then it's it's such a hard thing to find the it's such a fine line like for the past few days i've gotten into a new hobby and then i've been like diving so deep into it that i kind of again now forget like oh shit you know we have two days and and then semester starts again and i have to start working again even though nothing changed and nothing will change on monday you know it's not it's not as if uh there's these there are these memes you know on on the new year like 11 p.m 59 and then boom you know like midnight it's a new year but like everyone's like uh you know it's just all the same right nothing changed so it's same. Or it's just another day of 2020. Yeah. <laughs> 2020 continues part yeah. two. <laughs> True. And just another year of 2020, pretty much. So it's very hard to, to say, like, if, if, if it's going to be easy or hard. I think it's going to be hard. Although I've felt the same exact way almost anytime something like that happens. Not like, you know, a lockdown, but anytime a holiday period is over. And you have to get back to work. You get you have to get back to school, high school, whatever it is, right? You just feel like, oh man, I've I've been like so out of touch with with it that I really don't want to go back. But then maybe that's the purpose of holidays, you know, to like take your mind off of these things and then start fresh. Because you, I'm just gonna be telling myself, you know, on that Monday, I'm just gonna be telling myself like that's it, you know, last push, final final push, just like what semester and uh my friend actually finished his last exam today and he's like uh because you know university systems are different across like countries i guess so he's finished his last exam and he's like that's it university over well kind of and he's like all he's need to do uh he's finished the bachelor's work job type uh i don't know for us it's honors projects for other people it's like the thesis and I guess it has different names, but yeah, it's, uh, boom. Now we're getting back to it, I guess, but I don't know. So I just wanted to also hear your opinion. Cause like, 
just the way I opened the podcast. Like we have two different stories. Like boom, you just decided to you know put it all aside. Uh, and that Monday probably doesn't mean anything to you, does it? Uh, kind of, kind of does because of my vice president stuff. I'm going to have to get in touch with like certain people to discuss certain matters uh, about some plans we had for this semester uh, regarding like workshops for students and stuff. Um, and technically, like everybody, everybody's been back to work this week, like in terms of stuff. Mm. Um, so I totally really should have been doing that this week, but yeah, I've just been a just been a mess. Uh, I'm not I'm not looking forward to it at all. Mm -hmm. I've not really been able to motivate myself to do any work and i think it's to do again with just my upcoming vice president responsibilities and i think i'm just not excited about them mm -hmm. like i feel like so there's there's um there's different types of people and people get in terms of where, where they get their motivation from it's it's a kind of um spectrum kind of thing so you can get your motivation from uh you know the expectations that you have um so some other people have for you because of things that you've committed to and your work or whatever and you know for a long time i've tried to not do that and find my motivation internally so that i could be completely in control mm -hmm. of um what I pursue, which isn't necessarily uh, like it's not that I'm not necessarily doing this because I believe it's a it's it's the way to do it. I just decided to do it this way. Um, but you know, I'm also kind of realizing that ultimately, my motivation to do the things I do <laughs> was kind of born somewhere a long time ago through some sort of a uh, an impact that society had on me because if you can imagine if you live in a wild outside of society right so you're brought up by the wolves you're never going to care about artificial intelligence <laughs> right you're fair. just going to be that's, living out there to survive that's fair never so, thought of that yeah anyway like everything that i've experienced with society has led me to where i am today so it's like really far away the motivation for me to do the things that i do still comes from society and expectations that perhaps my family has for me like internally like internalized or whatever mm. um but yeah some, i guess for you know it can be also more immediate when you're working with people you know it can be a driver for you i guess when you have committed to things and you know people expect you to do it and and but if it's not a thing that you're really personally truly I, I don't want to say passionate about it but mm -hmm. you don't think it's the right thing that you're doing like maybe i feel like i'm not <laughs> utilizing my time in the best way yeah being the vice president like i'm not getting a lot out of it for who i am like i'm if i'm going to be an engineer i don't need to have that many people skills like if i'm going to be a programmer I like that maybe maybe that you know that's how i'm feeling and then the only way really i feel like the thing that's perpetuating uh me in this role is when i have some interaction with people and it's either like you know sometimes to be like oh you're doing a good job or whatever and it's like maybe maybe i should you know continue with this maybe not uh but sure, now over yeah. the christmas I'll quickly intervene here. Like, don't just put yourself in that little box, you know? It's like you're, you're not a stereotype. Well, stereotypes change too, you know? And it, say programmer or an engineer, you don't necessarily have to be like the... Or, I don't know. I think just, you have to play to your, your strengths is what I'm saying yeah, here. 
and True. my strengths aren't people skills, which I am really utilizing the most in my job as vice president. And that, like, I think I'm realizing how much energy that is taken of me now that I've isolated it. I mean, even in the beginning of the last semester, I could not focus on anything. Like, I could hardly focus on other things because I, 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 I kind of thought I was I was going to have to go out and speak to students to recruit them for like first years and second years to recruit them for being class reps, mm. like speak speak to classes and stuff. And I was like really not enthusiastic about that. I really didn't. That that was like a big challenge for me, and I didn't want to put myself through it. And in the end, I did end up just sending an email out and I put a meme in it, and it actually <laughs> managed to recruit some people. <laughs> And, Listen, and that that's worked. awesome, man. But yeah, that like for a week or f or not more than a week that put me in like a, this this vegetative state. I couldn't do anything else because I was just worrying about this like so much. Mm. Such a big deal for me. So that's what I'm saying. Where I kind of need to play to my strengths because at the end of the day, like. There is only so much adversity that you can put yourself through to where you can still be productive. Like you can't mm. be doing everything. And like on the one hand, like my social anxiety has been a long ongoing battle. And it's it's gotten better since I, I've gotten into university. But this was like a, another big jump to where I'm I'm working with people all the time. And there's no downtime from it. Uh, which I had before. So that's just my analysis of that. Um, and I feel I feel like the prospect, I'm not sure that's the right word, but the, the fact that I'm going to have to interact with people again, like a lot very soon professionally um, has just like been wearing down on me. Uh, because, yeah, I can't just close myself off and like do my programming anymore. I have to actually get out of my shell uh, and, and go and talk to people. And I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know exactly what, what is going on, but I, I have like just done a bunch of analysis of myself. And how I, you know, the environment I work in best, being on my own for a very long period of time, which I can't be. Uh, so, do you feel like challenge? Do you feel like you, the best work that you do and achieve is when you're alone? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I still struggle with that. Like. Um, Let's see, you know, just just the way I approach, I approach uh, learning. <laughs> Taking the right approach in itself takes a lot of focus from me. So, I guess, yeah, to to throw into that a whole other thing, which is interacting with people uh, this much. Is is probably just uh, too much, and that's a high high level analysis of it, uh, basically. And you know the way I, the, the the reason I feel like that this has come back is because I've literally isolated uh, this vice president stuff now from everything else because that's the only thing I've got like that I'm committed to now. Mm. Uh, so and and it's if if I'm still feeling like shit, then I um, have more reasons to believe that that's what it is. It's is, just uh, is it that, or or is it you're trying to look for the scapegoat, or what's the expression? You know, like if that's the only single thing left, but then maybe if you remove that too, and you're like, oh well, that didn't help. You know, have you ever thought of? That could be a, a thing too, you know? Yeah, I've certainly thought of that. 
I mean, I don't know what, what more to tell you. I've, I've thought of it. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, yeah, I think we have talked. You know, I can, the, yeah, sorry. I can get out and I can do physical work just fine. That's the other thing. Um, it's not like I'm lazy. Mm. You know, I could be, if I, I wasn't doing university, I'd be doing some sort of physical work and I know I wouldn't be facing the same problems. So that's how I know I'm not just lazy, that it's the whole, um, the whole different, um, well, the environment and everything that, right? Yeah. The dynamic of having to, well, deal with people and having, uh, well, thoughts that someone might ask you for something too, you know, we I think we already talked about that. Uh, it's like the expectation that someone might come in and, you know, ask you for, for to do something, right? That already like puts you out of, uh, out of the rhythm. If you're in, in one, hmm. like, that's the thing. Like, I'm just thinking back and thinking, well, I'm still a student kind of, you know, theoretically, all I should be doing is studying, right? So, I don't know. Maybe shouldn't be too hard on ourselves either. Yeah, I mean, the, the expectation, I feel like, is, is for me, it was really weird how most of us students here, you know, aren't getting the A grades and stuff yet. You get told all the time that you need to go above and beyond doing other stuff to to stand out. Mm. But so many students here don't even like aren't even good programmers here doing computing. And then and then you're like, oh yeah, but you need to go and go above and beyond. <laughs> like to st to stand out, you'd literally have to be a decent programmer here. Mm. That's an interesting so, thought. Yeah, like in in uni, so I've noticed that through like team projects, I guess some people just aren't interested in it, right? But they still, you know, do the degree and they. It's weird. It's weird. Yeah, but it was especially in in first, maybe second year that we had a few lecturers being like. Yeah, you need to like apply yourself already outside and like find extracurricular things and side projects and stuff. And it's like, actually, if I just paid attention, like full attention to the course and read the books and stuff, I'd probably be better, be better off right now instead of worrying about as external projects and trying to motiv motivate myself to do projects and stuff. Mm. Um, yeah, I think it's just a distraction, really, to be honest given that most people really aren't doing, weren't doing extra projects and weren't even, you know, I don't know. But yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think get what you're saying, yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like you've done but just everything you could? Away from that. In the, the first but second domestically. and all the years, you know, where you're like, I am, I'd rather read the book. So did you read the book? Yeah, so that's that's the thing. Like, I I did like above average first and second year, but I didn't read the books. And I feel like if I had gone back, that's the thing I would have done and focused on. Mm. Um, just making sure because the books are so good, they just explain everything as as it is. If you just try to if you try to learn about operating systems or computer architecture you know, pick up the book on the thing and it explains everything. Um, whereas on the, on the other hand, it's like, you got the slides and then Google things here and there and it's all kind of scraps of information, like it's all fragmented information and you never like put it all together. I know there's people who did read books uh, they read books and in the year below us there's a few like the best stu students in the year below us uh, do read books uh, that they're you know given for, for modules and stuff so you know I I, I think it's, it's a good thing 
uh, and then the other thing's probably just not worrying about you know extra you know extra colloquial things maybe like sports or something to just kind of like let loose but like personal projects not many people are doing those and uh like motivating yourself to do extracurricular projects as well unless you know it's it's maybe like coding challenges or whatever um because then it's like some of it is just like the experience and the fun of it uh, so do you feel, I feel like the focus should be on the things that they're teaching us because it's actually good Useful. That's why you come to uni, right? Um, be, uh... And and just kind of understanding that your students don't need a, a, any extra stuff on top of that because they're actually not doing that well on the course itself already and they're struggling with it. Hmm. But you think it's a personal choice of everyone? Do you either do it or not? It's your choice. Like people come to uni, personal choice. people come to uni for different reasons, I guess, but I think it's a personal choice. Yeah, obviously, but you know, when the, the way we're encouraged to read, do the reading for courses is by being like, these are the recommended books. And then the way we're being, um, encouraged to do extracurricular stuff is you need to go and do it because you need to make yourself stand out but in fact you know those people who go out and do those things to make themselves stand out is like i don't know and again the best students that i know from the year below us i don't know that many people in our year actually who who do a lot of reading i know they've got a lot of good students i don't know much about them but from tutoring um the years below us i know that like the, the better students do read the books so how are you feeling after well i guess we we keep you know coming back to this but like now that you kind of put this aside well you are doing the vice president things with like coming, well, think about the uni itself, right? No one's asking you to do any reading now. Like, yeah. Feel like you have more mental space to do your own stuff? Or? Uh, I did a little bit, maybe over Christmas when I was home. But, you know, it was more kind of relaxed stuff. I wasn't doing like any major focused work. I did a little bit of <laughs> things. Still, I was probably more productive than since I came back to to my own flat. Um, and I've just been in a slump since I came back to my own flat, and now I'm going to be doing my vice president stuff again, which I kind of maybe should have started this week. I mean, at, at the minimum, like my role requires me to just chair the meetings and that's pretty much it. But that's not my forte, sharing the meetings. So I go beyond that and, you know, I, I help students individually to resolve like um, class reps individually to help them resolve students' problems and, you know, talk to staff. Uh, beyond you know the um meetings that we have uh bi-weekly the student staff liaison meetings uh and then there's the you know the things that just kind of organizing things with like the discipline lead uh for students which is basically just yeah being like this is what students need hmm. <laughs> students are really struggling right now uh and then she's like let's do this and uh, <laughs> yeah and then like sorting out like representation of science and engineering students uh, in maths that aren't math students uh things like that 
at chairing meetings is like uh, on on the you know thinking of on my feet on of, on what to say to people. <laughs> it's like not my forte. Uh, I can't come up like with any solutions for you on the spot and like the way I analyze things deeply uh, I can't come up with solutions on the spot it's not really my job as yeah, the chair of meeting, say, but that's not, like my that you're not supposed to yeah kind but of, that's but that's my like natural drive to try to find try to <laughs> find an, an answer that solves the problem because yeah that's 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 just me naturally uh but obviously you have to learn not to do that not to try to do that and just kind of like uh move the meeting along which is the point of chairing it like the the, the goal of chairing it and make sure that you know everybody everybody is heard and everybody and the people who need to hear the stuff are listening <laughs> so just like engaging staff and what students say uh things like that yeah and that's like at, at, at the core of it my job so i go beyond that because that's that that in itself is not very fulfilling yeah i see well i don't know monday's coming up i'm still yeah still you know just as we talked uh earlier yeah that monday's looming over like uh like the reaper although i know that you know it's probably nothing's gonna change you know it's just that uh, now i'm gonna be expected to do more work so that's the yeah it's just back to the normal the normal the normal yeah although this semester I mean, is supposed it's just, to be it's... different what do you mean well it's like no more mod modules kind of there's gonna be one it's randomly, one. but yeah, mostly it's just writing your your bachelor's last project, you know. So maybe next week, uh, episode fifty three, I'm gonna have more things to say about that. We'll see how that goes. Um, but I don't know. It's been our little half an hour. Up to you if you have anything else to share. I was just gonna ask about your racing hobby. Oh, that one. <laughs> Oh, as your racing con hobby. It consumed me. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it consumed me the past few days, man. That's why I, I have yeah. done some very sim like uh work on, on the game that I'm making, right? I've created a a new intro scene which is supposed to like be the the thing that introduces players to like what the story and stuff, you know when they start the game but like that's not the most difficult thing obviously and so i did some work but it could be you know done in like five or so hours anyway mm. and then that yeah. happened for for the past like two weeks or so i think i i've done it's like i i don't want, i want to feel guilty but at the same time the other side of me is saying yo don't feel guilty but it's like you know, what if I just release the game and forget about it? And then what if the other side is like, nah, dude, just, you know, chill and go with it, you yeah. know? So, I don't know. I think I'll just... That's where, uh, anyway, yeah. That's where holidays are a weird thing. True, it's, but uh, it's not holidays anymore. It's like two weeks after, like, New Year, right? It's It's like Christmas was, like, freaking three weeks ago or so. It's like where you when you're 21 and you still have holidays. <laughs> yeah, it's like I mean, it, it so is kind silly. of the last, well, penultimate or what's the the word holiday that we have. There's gonna be the, kind of the Easter. Last, one. You're not gonna be working. The, oh, the Easter, yeah. Yeah, the Easter, the summer, Easter, but yeah. true. But then the summer comes, <laughs> you know, and that's it. That's you. You're an adult after that. No holidays like that. True. <laughs> She's getting kicked out. She's getting kicked out of the, the, the system that protects you. And then, you know, you're like, hey, now you have a degree. And then, hey, go and do something with it. I'm like, <laughs> especially yeah. now when no one's, well, okay. I'm not, not going to say no one's hiring. I'm just going to say no one's uh, in an easy position to like 
do interviews and hire people to work in offices. It's, I think both employees, potential employees and the employers who are conducting interviews are in quite a difficult situation now because you do want to hire the best guy for the job. Well, the best guy was just like uh, an example, you know, best person <laughs> or a, a Martian. I don't know. It doesn't matter, you know. <laughs> It's like, yeah, don't, don't want to put any, position, any genders or whatever, but like, uh, any person for the job, right? The best person. And then the COVID is like, nah, kind of, unless you're very smart and, and know how to, you know, assess a person over the distance kind of, you know, remotely. Mm -hmm. But yeah i mean i i've i don't i don't have an it firm or anything I, I have no idea how to hire people or what the you know what the hr does but like the video that you sent was where google is looking at your search history and kind of oh hey you know the search history kind of matches what we want to hire now hey there's a challenge you know win the challenge and you get hired by google like they can do that why not you know hmm. so if, if it is possible so they're, they're not really supposed to for like data privacy identify what your kind of search fucking data search? privacy sorry for swearing you voluntarily go on a browser type in google.com it's your choice it's you can go to DuckDuckGo. you can go to start page you can go to anywhere you want you ended up on their lawn on their turf pretty much let me finish so you know <laughs> go ahead sorry there you go yeah uh <laughs> Technically, they're not supposed to identify you with your search results, as in identifiable information with the person in real life. Oh, there's no identifiable so information identity. in that, is it? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. They're not. Oh my god. They're identifying a gray person from the pool of people uh, who are interested in Python yes. programming. Let's say. Indeed. Okay. Indeed. Let me finish. Okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> Yeah, no, but it's, it's just a scary thought that that's what they're required to do. But what if that's not what they do? If they have your information and they can identify you as a person and you actually go to apply to the company with your identity and they can just kind of look you up and be like, ah, no, nope, not this guy. That's theoretically what employers kind of do, don't they? You, well, you but put... if Google is actually so corrupt that... Mm, they have extra they data can they have the extra data on you because they're Google and <laughs> yeah. Well, that's and that's actually personally identifiable when it's not supposed to be, but we never know. It's interesting. Yeah. And my, my headphones are informing me that they're going to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that has been us. I'll probably go back to, to do some more final, you know, races some more st some racing and then pack it all up probably and see what I need to do because I promised my supervisor that I'm gonna read some things before well over the holidays I'm like yeah yeah I'm gonna look into it and then I'm gonna you know come up with an idea of, on, on like what the unique selling points of the software would be because I need to make a personal assistant now so mm. well We'll see how that goes. Uh, it's not too late to defer yet, but I, <laughs> I don't uh, follow in my footsteps. No. <laughs> yeah. I'll, um, well, whatever happens, happens. Screw that. Not to say the university experience isn't worth it right now, but you'd be coming back for a second semester next year. Hmm. So you'd have like this whole time. Yeah, sucks. Ah, we'll see. Anyway, it's been a it's been a pleasure chatting to you. Um, mm. Likewise. Hopefully next week, you know, already be in the swing of things, or or maybe I'll see you. Maybe I'll be still, you know, still doing whatever the hell. Uh, but hopefully, you know, I'll be back into back into the uni and stuff, I'll have more information to share. Maybe 
even about the project and how it's going and you know what new developments there are and how that personal assistant can help people with their creativity needs something like that good luck with all of that yeah appreciate it looking forward to hear about it in the next episode we'll see we'll see appreciate it and uh, thank you all for listening catch y'all next week see you